The King of the Monsters has graced pretty much every medium non-stop since his debut in 1954, coming out on top in nearly each of his innumerable battles. His status as the Alpha Titan, the strongest being on Earth, is all but unshakable. But what happens when he's not on his world? There have been various instances and circumstances where the Big G has been placed in alternate dimensions, parallel universes housing their own pantheons of iconic and legendary characters of intense power. Is Godzilla the true King Kaiju of the multiverse, or does his legend stop at the shores of neighboring? realities. Hey everyone, it's Crisis here, and today I'll detail these crossover storylines, analyze Godzilla's speed and strength within them, and tell you all why Godzilla is him. Starting off with Godzilla vs. the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers from 2022, we find the Rangers' most famous villain, Rita Repulsa, harnessing the power of an artifact to teleport into a dimension free from her Ranger foes. This takes her into the world of Godzilla, who is fighting Megalon, making Rita immediately impressed by the King of the Monsters, which is substantial considering her whole shtick is developing or enchanting giant monsters. This is taken one step further when, in an attempt to enthrall the Kaiju to the end of weaponizing him against her enemies, Godzilla simply resists the mind control powers of Rita, only angering the monster. This has Goji primed and ready for combat with the Green Ranger's Dragon Zord, who followed Rita into Godzilla's dimension. For any Ranger fan, we all know that Tommy's the GOAT, no matter what shade he's sporting, but he's just not Godzilla. Despite being shown stronger than the standard Megazord, such as when it freed the rest of the Rangers from a capsule containment unit, Goji makes quick work of the mech. In fact, the King himself manages to punch a hole in the Zord with a single strike, shrugs off its missiles, tail whips it to the ground, and atomic breath blasts it into oblivion. Tommy just barely manages to escape, stating that the Dragon Zord had never been hit this hard before ever. This is insane, especially for the first issue. Seeing as the Dragon Zord is stronger than the Megazord, which has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with and beaten many of Rita's most powerful creations. Rita and Lord Zed, the true antagonist of the Rangers, boast plenty of planet or star-destroying lore, either through raw power or with their weapons. The Zords represent the most powerful technology in the Rangers universe. This is important considering that Alpha-1, many years ago in the comic timeline, was actually a very impressive force for good, who was ultimately undone but survived a supernova explosion, with the Megazord and Dragonzord being far more durable as they are the ultimate fighting machines made long after Alpha-1. And Godzilla here tore through the stronger of the two like tissue paper. As far as speed, many of the Rangers and their foes scale to each other across the various series, as the likes of Andross from Rangers in Space, someone who could deflect laser beams while traveling at massively faster than light distances across the stars, is kept up with in combat against Lord Zed who the bulk of Mighty Morphin and therefore this Godzilla would be able to react to as well. By the second issue, the Blue Ranger backs this up, stating that Godzilla is stronger than anything the Rangers have ever faced. And this is all after Goji had already undergone a battle against Megalon, mind you. Seeing all of this, Rita plans to use the various monsters of Godzilla's universe to conquer all of space and time, which is pretty impressive for the Big G as he is the king of them all, and can very often solo every other monster in a gauntlet in certain timelines. However, with balance being his main objective, Godzilla teams up with the Megazord to defeat the Kaiju, which Rita had since spawned. Eventually, King Ghidorah shows up and starts to clean house, taking care of each hero and villain on the board. Seeing this, the dragon Zord and Megazord fuse to aid Godzilla, with the two making quick work of the three-headed dragon with their combined power. Yet still, the Mega Dragon Zord now represents the only threat to Goji's alpha status, leading to the King Beam struggling against the Rangers. Now, earlier, the normal Megazord was at about 80% power, but this shouldn't really matter as the difference between the standard one and the Mega Dragon Zord is astronomical, and Godzilla is still a rival to these forces far beyond beings that can withstand supernovas. In fact, the Mega Dragon Zord should be able to one-shot the standard Megazord. Not wanting to push it further, the Rangers teleport back to their dimension. Rita attempts the same, but with her multiversal talisman shattered, she's sent across the realms, seeing that the Rangers and Godzilla's timelines are intertwined. 
One such timeline logically would include Godzilla's inclusion into the main Marvel comic book universe. In 1977, just after the first set of his films, or the Showa era, had wrapped up, Godzilla would be firmly placed smack dab in the middle of 616 and the canon storyline. First appearing, as is tradition, after the nuclear tests of the 1950s, Godzilla would lay dormant until the 1970s, or like 2020 considering Marvel's sliding timescale. Regardless, S.H.I.E.L.D. naturally takes defensive maneuvers against the kaiju, sending Helicarrier and Iron Man devised weaponry to stunt the monster's attacks. Godzilla makes it to New York City, home of the bulk of Marvel's superheroes, earning the attention of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Fantastic Four, and even the Avengers. Not to mention, he stomped out the Hulk prior to this. This combined might is stated to represent the most powerful group of heroes on Earth. They'll last longer than most. Iron Man and Vision are blasted away by atomic breath before Human Torch is backhanded out of his fiery form, leaving Godzilla to yet contend with the power of Thor. A strike from Mjolnir harms the monster, but fails to down the beast. The God of Thunder stands to ponder Godzilla's nature, and compares him to the World Serpent the mighty beast destined to defeat Thor in Norse mythology. Goji again downs the Human Torch and Mr. Fantastic before him and Thor exert their full power against one another. Matching strength as Godzilla attempts to bring down the Empire State Building, Thor trying to keep it upright. Just then, the rest of the heroes redouble their effort in one of the coolest splash pages of all time, Godzilla just eating their combined attacks. The literal only reason New York wasn't wiped off the map was because some kid with a bond to Goji asks him to leave. Typical human characters getting in the way of Godzilla action. Even as early as this era, many of Marvel's heavy hitters would scale to universe busters, such as Thor impressing the likes of Surtur, who threatened the entire universe, heck, Thor even as a baby was shaking the entire realms, and Hulk performed feats beyond the capabilities of Kang's equipment, which can typically erase or overwrite entire timelines. Silver Surfer infamously flies around the galaxy and reacts at massively faster than light speeds, with Thor and Hulk being able to keep up with him, and Godzilla all but dominates said foes. But the cream of the crop, to me as well as in terms of power scaling, is the still ongoing Godzilla vs. Kong vs. Justice League. This series pits the kaiju from the American Monsterverse, including the likes of Godzilla 2014, Skull Island, and the new movie against one of the many infinite DC timelines. I have to stress this, but this simply cannot be the prime comic universe. A big point of the series is that Superman has yet to marry Lois Lane, yet we have the likes of Red Hood, Duke Thomas's Signal, Damian Wayne, Jessica Cruz, Simon Baz, Green Lantern, and on and on. Many characters that were simply not active during 1996 when Superman and Lois were married in the actual canon timeline. The writer of the story even clarified on Twitter that this is just an Elseworlds story, canon to the DC multiverse, however in the same way that Henry Cavill Superman or Justice League Unlimited or Arkhamverse Superman don't share the power level of even one another, much less the main comics, we'd have to dig a little deeper to determine how strong this silver screen iteration of Godzilla is here. Due to a combination of mother box tech, various kaiju from the Monsterverse are pulled into the DC Universe. Starting off with the initial scaling, Gorilla Grodd, an infamous Flash villain, instantly bows in reverence to King Kong and recognizes the Titan as his god. In a generic since this is already pretty cool to consider that a foe to one of the greatest heroes of all time bends the knee to someone Godzilla sunned in their versus movie. But that's just the start. Clark wants to pop the question to Lois, but the king of the monsters says his piece. Superman, in typical fashion, is holding back for a few reasons. He thinks the kaiju may possess sentience, as well as the fact that he'd rather not go all out and knock the monster into a nearby building. Regardless, the Man of Steel's hand is forced, with Goji eating an uppercut from Superman about as well as his Marvel counterpart handled Thor's strike. Hitting the Man of Tomorrow with a tail whip so hard that he can't help but remark that the beast is strong. Hawk Girl arrives to offer support, however the best swings of her nth metal mace do pretty much nothing to Godzilla, leading to her getting one shot. Superman says the big G is faster than he looks, before using his heat vision to beam struggle against Goji's atomic breath 
really going to show how evenly matched the King of the Monsters is compared to the greatest of heroes. Shazam then tags in for Hawkgirl, summoning a lightning bolt in hopes of downing the monster, yet it only works to depower the mightiest mortal, leading to Superman getting blasted by a massive beam of atomic breath in order to save Billy Batson. Godzilla blasted Superman so hard that his heart stopped beating. Adam Smasher arrives, growing in scale to match Godzilla, and barely puts up a fight before getting dealt with himself. Supergirl shows up to back up Shazam, managing to knock down Goji for a single panel before he just walks it off and gets back up. Tiamat, a water monster, is another story, as his fury can't even be halted by Aquaman's telepathy, requiring him, Flash, and Wonder Woman to attempt to fight the kaiju off until Godzilla arrives. Godzilla makes quick work of Tiamat, leading Aquaman to straight up release the Kraken, who too fails to stop Godzilla. Godzilla's onslaught. These are the issues that are released up until now, with the final one coming out like months after the new Empire. Regardless, there's plenty to go off of. Despite being in Elseworlds, the story's writer also said he considers this version of Superman to be just as powerful as his main comic iteration. Now, even running with that, he doesn't specify at what point in time, as we know Superman grows massively in power over the decades. However, even being conservative, the Man of Steel pretty consistently fends off the likes of universal threats, those that either embody or can produce enough energy to destroy the entire universe, whether it be pre-crisis, post-crisis, or the current timeline. So considering that Supergirl's power is directly compared to Superman's by Green Lantern and Flash, and with Superman considering Godzilla to be fast and strong, Godzilla would, based on this comic alone, fall within the universal busting tier of power. In terms of speed, the writer only specified power in his statement about the two Superman being comparable, so it's hard to place his speed beyond his feats in the movies, perhaps. If you interpret the term powerful to just be all-encompassing, however, the likes of Superman and Supergirl have managed to just fly backwards or forwards in time through raw speed alone meaning they literally break the speed formula itself and would have immeasurable speed. Superman's been able to do this for a very long time. However, there is a slight wrinkle here, as the same writer stated that Godzilla's radiation gives off a similar signature as Kryptonite. While he also said that the book isn't canon to the MonsterVerse either, so maybe we can't apply all of the same lore, it is generally accepted that Godzilla passively emits radiation, as he is essentially a giant nuclear power plant with legs and eats the stuff to survive. It's all very unquantifiable and hard to exactly gauge. I think it is pretty clear to say that Superman most likely would have won, or at least somehow managed some kind of victory if not for that fact. He's just fighting a guy who at least fires kryptonite from his mouth, so yeah. Still though, Superman said Godzilla was strong, so unless he couldn't tell he was being weakened by the radiation when he said that, and considering the fact that other kaiju weaker than Godzilla scale to Supergirl, who should be within Superman's ballpark while not giving off any radiation as far as we know, this version of the King of the Monsters would still roughly be a universal level threat, even possessing a blatant win condition against Kryptonians in the form of his kryptonite adjacent atomic breath. There's also various statements throughout the comics, such as Lois calling the kaiju the greatest threat the heroes have ever faced, or the fact that the super genius Lex Luthor thinks he'll be unstoppable once he repairs and pilots Mecha Godzilla. This all underlines a greater point, however. Whether it be Power Rangers, Marvel, or DC Comics, Godzilla is just that guy, that monster. He just can't lose, existing at a level beyond even the GOATs of any respective franchise. Whenever he pulls up, wherever, it's all hands on deck. Everyone calls him the most powerful or baddest thing they've ever laid their eyes on. I genuinely think it's just part of Godzilla's official narrative that he's just not getting f***ed with, no matter if it's canon or non-canon timelines. Put him in Star Wars and Darth Vader just starts shivering after all of his attacks or force powers bounce off the big G like they're nothing. If he showed up in Endgame, Thanos is literally seppukuing himself on his helicopter blade, anything other than squaring up to the king. 
if he just woke up in Pokemon, if this was being written, he's just shoulder checking Arceus. He's eating a halo ring like a donut, pulling Arthur's sword from the stone, drop kicking Super Shenron. Think of any universe, any concept, and I guarantee that Godzilla just waltzes in and dominates it off the bat. He walked through the Avengers, tore apart the Megazord, and put Superman into a coma. I'm sorry, Godzilla is him.